All right. So an equation that allows us to do that, you can jump anywhere you want, oh, is called explicit. So last vocabulary, I promise. All right. It's known as an explicit equation. And I'm going to tell you what it looks like. Okay. You know two different types of sequences. You know arithmetic and you know geometric. So for arithmetic, here is what it looks like. T of n. And I'm going to use numbers. I'm not going to write it out in words. So T of n would equal 3n plus 7. That means we start at 7 and I'm always adding 3. That's an explicit equation because I can jump anywhere I want to. I can plug in 100 and I can tell you what's the 100th term. And I'm going to put a little A there. That stands for arithmetic. That's the arithmetic version. Okay. So you guys are slowly becoming experts. I should say quickly, actually. I'm impressed with geometric. So remember, geometric sequences are when you multiply over and over again. And it looks something like this. Our starting point is seven. We're always multiplying by three raised to the n power. That's geometric, okay? That is what explicit looks like. You can plug in any number for n and you've got it. Okay, however, there's another type of way to write an equation, yes. And this equation is one that you cannot jump anywhere you want to in the sequence. This type of equation asks you, okay, I have to know the previous term before I can do what I need to figure out. Why would we want an equation where you can't jump anywhere you want, okay? All right, let's think about your cell phone bill. You get your cell phone bill for January and you don't pay it. You think Verizon's just gonna be like, cool, okay, thanks. We'll, we'll catch you again in February. Just try to pay it next time. Is that what they're gonna say to you? What are they going to do? They won't cut you off in one month, but what are they gonna do to your February bill? Yeah, they're gonna double it. And so what happens is what you pay in February depends on what you did in January. It's very much like if your parents have a mortgage for your house, that's what banks use is they use this type of equation because what you pay in February depends on what you've done previously. So if you underpay, you owe more. If you overpay, you don't owe as much. And so banks are always adjusting that, but they don't care what happens at 100. They want to know what happens next. And this kind of equation is called recursive. Recursive. Banks use these equations all the time, calculating loan payments, okay, debt repayments, student loan repayments. Okay, this is how they look at it. Now, when I write this, guys, it's going to look weird, but just like Monday, hang in there. You're going to get the hang of it. So a recursive formula has two parts. Part one is always the starting point. You have to tell me t of zero, okay? That means I start this sequence at seven. The second part looks like this, and this is the weird part. Whoa, what are you writing, Mrs. Taupa? That is weird. It is weird, okay? And I'm gonna explain it here in a minute. But yes, you say that t of n plus 1 equals t of n plus 3. Okay, that is what a recursive sequence looks like. t of n plus 1 means that's February. But February equals what happens in January plus 3. So the term I want, the term I'm looking for, depends on what just happened plus three, okay? That's what arithmetic looks like. All right, but you know we have geometric too. So let's put in geometric. Oh, look at geometric. It starts the exact same way. You have to give me a starting point. So we'll look at our geometric. We started at seven. That's what our equation told us. 
Okay, we started at seven. Now take a look at how this one is written. Notice the only difference is that instead of plus three, it is times three because that's geometric. I'm always multiplying over and over and over again by three. Remember, t of n plus one means that's the term I want. Like I need the hundredth term, but I need the 99th term. I can't just skip anywhere I want to. I need the previous term. Okay. Like I said, guys, this looks weird. You're going to get used to it, though. I promise. Okay. We're good. Yes. Yeah. All right. What we're going to do here is we're going to practice, and you're going to practice just first by filling in the blanks. So I'm going to do the first one with you, and then I'm going to have you try one, and then we'll keep going like that. All right. So first things first. 3, 7, 11, 15, 19. What would come next? 23. I love it. Okay, so we'd have 23, 27, 31. What are we doing? Ah, excellent. We are adding four each time. So that means, and you'll have to excuse me, I did the exact same thing everybody does. It's not an X, it's an N. We're in sequence world, okay? So we know our slope right now is four. But now I need my starting point. What would be my starting point? Yeah, I have to take a step backwards. So I would subtract one, or sorry, subtract four, and I would end up with negative one. Now I'm gonna write that so it's a little bit neater, so you guys can see that. That's not so bad, remember? That's just what you guys did on Monday. 4n minus 1, got it, boom. But now you have to turn that into recursive. Your 4 and your negative 1 have to be somewhere in your recursive formula. And so here it is. The term I want equals the previous term plus 4. That's where the floor belongs. That's how we're building it. Remember, t of zero tells us that's the first, that's the zero point in our sequence or the zero term or the zero figure, okay? All right, notice the four and the negative one show up in both equations. You just have to know where to place them. Okay, I want you guys to try number two. See if you can fill in the blanks for number two. Okay, you see what you got. This guy, be careful. I agree with your negative five, but if you're subtracting five going this way, what would be the number right in front of the three? Seven, no, eight. Yep, so it'll be plus eight right there. And then you'll put your negative five there and your eight there. All right, let's take a look. Nice, okay. Excellent, guys. You can see that our Sequence generators, you're subtracting five, <coughs> and your t of zero is eight. Okay, let's try the next one. All right, one half, one, 
two, four, eight. How are we generating this guy? Oh, we're just multiplying by two here. So that means the next term, I have 16, 32, 64, and multiplying by two. All right, question though, what would be our first term? What would be right there? Yeah, 0.25, if some of you said one fourth, it's the same thing. If I take one half divided by two, oh, you're dividing. That means you're really multiplying by a fraction. One half times one half is one fourth. So you could put one fourth there. If you put 0.25, it's fine. And we're always multiplying by two. Again, that should be an N. So we have one fourth times two to the N power. Our recursive formula is the exact same thing. The term I want equals the previous term times two. The zero term is one fourth, or if you put 0.25, that's okay. All right, last one with fill in the blanks. See if you can do number four, fill in the blanks. Yep, it's on the other side, and then we'll take a look at what you're going to get to do next. So now see if you can do one through four without filling the blanks. And then we'll get each sequence and see if you can write explicit and recursive. Excellent. Now we'll come around and one. All right, let's take a look. Beautiful. Okay, so try one through four. And then we'll get each sequence and see if you can write both explicit and recursive for each one. Yep, same for you. Let's see if you can do one through four. Nice. Oh, we're getting it, guys. So you're going to flop those, switch those, because you're in an in a explicit. Your starting point is there, and what you multiply is there. So you just need to flip those. And in this one, you're always multiplying by three, and your starting point is one. So on both of those. And then try one through four. Once you feel comfortable with that number four, I'll come around and check. I want you to try practice writing on your own. That means no more fill in the blank. You try to see if you can write those equations. Hang on. Nice and done. And then I will. Yeah. So try practice one through four. See if you can do it on your own. Mm -hmm. Is this right? People at home, here's the answer to the first one. Pause and see if you can do the second one. All right, guys, here is the answer to the second one. Try the third. Here's the answer to three. Try that last one. All right, guys, that is the answer to the last one. Make sure if you have questions, email me. I have two.